Hey everyone, I'm excited to be able to talk to you today about a system we built called Basil that tries to rethink how to build performant and expressive Byzantine tolerant databases. I'm sure most of you, whether that's entirely voluntary or not, have heard of blockchains. And before I get into Basil itself, I want to start building our context by revisiting the simple but beautiful abstraction of totally ordered ledgers that underpin consensus in most BFT and blockchain systems. This is a really powerful abstraction because it allows mutually distrustful parties to share and replicate data in a way that is resilient to some amount of compromised or malicious behavior and still agree on a common view of the system state. Totally ordering transactions trivially maintains traditional asset guarantee guarantees such as atomicity or isolation and makes it easy for applications to materialize key value stores on top. Now, while this is a powerful and desirable abstraction to build our applications around, implementing in the way that is scalable is challenging. Roughly speaking, there's two main issues we face. For one, to construct the totally ordered ledger, we need to run Byzantine fault tolerant agreement protocols between all replicas that usually require A, several round trips of message exchanges, B, they rely on a dedicated leader to act as a sequencer, and C, they usually have expensive recovery protocols that also notoriously give BFT a reputation for being too complex. On the other hand, while executing transactionally sequentially is trivially safe and asset compliant, that can become an obvious super bottleneck. And to make matters worse, this kind of order execute pattern usually forces us into the use of restrictive transaction models, stored procedures, or one-shot transactions, or even UTXO models that database operators in practice don't actually use very much. In fact, in a recent study performed at CMU, they found that the majority of database systems use stored procedures less than 10% of the time. To overcome these challenges, we designed Basil, which is a Byzantine fault-tolerant transactional key value store that offers interactive and serializable asset transactions to scale this abstraction of a fault-tolerant ordered log. It is actually not immediately obvious what serializability means in the presence of Byzantine actors, since we can't constrain how Byzantine participants will interact with the system. So our first contribution is to introduce a meaningful notion of what correctness for transactional application means in the BFT setting. What we strive to guarantee is that the execution appears to correct client as indistinguishable from a serializable execution that involves only read and write operations issued by correct clients. Framed differently, we submit that it's completely okay for a Byzantine participant to wreak havoc and violate asset guarantees as long as every correct participant observes only state comprised of serializable transactions. This is a strong correctness property to strive for, but it doesn't actually tell us anything about progress. For example, a correct Byzantine serializable system could still systematically abort all transactions or influence the outcome of all read operations. To address this notion, we introduce a second, more general BFT system property that we call Byzantine independence. It states that no group consisting of only Byzantine participants should be able to single-handedly decide the outcome of our operations. This is an important property and actually one that traditional systems that rely on a leader do not attain because this leader has undue control over transaction ordering and is able to inject and front run transactions to influence results. In Basel instead, we will strive to meet this property of business independence and sidestep concerns about ordering and fairness altogether. The key to efficiently realizing both this notion of correctness and progress is the core ethos that we build based around, which we call independent operability. Independent operability states that all operations that can be independent should also be processed independently. In Basel, we therefore adopt a client-driven design in which each client drives their own transaction processing and is responsible for their own progress. As part of this design, Basel tries to strike a balance between optimism to allow for aggressive parallelism and yet remain robust to failures. It's not hard to imagine that mixing empowered Byzantine clients and optimism is a slippery slope, and doing so safely and robustly is one of the main challenges in Basel. At a high level, Basel is made up of three core components. One, a concurrency control mechanism that allows for optimistic parallelism but ensures serializability. Two, a commit protocol that is integrated with the concurrency control protocol to avoid redundant coordination and efficiently ensure consistency across shard replicas and across shards. 
And lastly, a fallback protocol that allows clients to retain independent operability in face of business failures. I don't have time to go into any detail on these protocols. So in the next three slides, I'll briefly go over only a few cool characteristics for each of these components. I encourage you to read the full paper if you're curious to learn more about the details. In Basel, clients use an interactive transaction model and speculatively execute the transactions in parallel. For those familiar, we extend to a replicated in business setting, a multi-version timestamp ordering protocol, which is a sophisticated but standard database concurrency control mechanism that assigns transaction and serialization order a priori and allows optimistic reads of uncommitted data. In a Byzantine setting, we need to be a little more careful and make sure that reads are both valid and not arbitrarily stale, and malicious clients cannot leave uncommitted bytes lying around indefinitely. Since these optimistic executions may not correspond to serializable ones, clients need to submit their completed transactions for validation in order to commit. This commit protocol follows a two-phase commit cell pattern in which all replicas vote and the client acts as coordinated. In most cases, when there are no failures or contention, it allows clients to commit and return to the application in just a single round trip. If that is not the case, then the decision is not durable and we need an extra round trip to persist this decision. One of my favorite insights on durability that I don't get to talk about more here is the fact that unlike state machine replication protocols, we only need to persist this decision on a single shard, no matter how many shards are involved in the execution. The commit protocol also makes sure that business serializability is upheld and is designed in a way that allows neither clients nor groups of Byzantine replicas to dictate the outcome. Clients may misbehave during the commit protocol and block containing transactions. So the way Basel reconciles this is by allowing any client to finish the commit protocol of any transaction. The recovery protocol has some nice properties such as requiring a single round trip in most cases, involving again only a single shard and doing so with only linear communication complexity. Like with most BFT recovery protocols, the details get fairly involved. But what I find especially cool is the fact that not just our clients in charge of their own liveness, but failures in recovery only affect contending transactions. This is unlike existing BFT recovery protocols that need to replace a failed leader and do so by halting all transaction processing when this leader is under the rest. There are several challenges with recovery in a client-driven setting, such as dealing with a provocation or a live log with multiple interested clients, which I won't talk about now, but learning about how Basel deals with those is one of the many, many pleasures you'll have in reading the paper. Before we end, I wanna briefly talk about how this design translates to practice. We implemented a prototype and evaluated its performance over three common online transaction processing workloads, TPCC, Small Bank, and Redwiz, which experience varying levels of contention. On the left, we compare Basel to Taper, a recent state-of-the-art crash failure database that uses a similar client driven approach to Basel. Basel's main overheads stem from the fact that it requires signatures and larger quorums to be Byzantine fault tolerant, but nonetheless offers competitive performance given the increased security. On the right, we compare Basel against two BFT baselines that unlike Basel, follow a standard modular approach that lays two-phase commit and concurrency control atop black box consensus protocols. Here, Basel significantly outperforms both largely because it can reduce latency by often committing transactions in a single round trip, which in turn translates into throughput on contention bottleneck workloads. Of course, Basel's strong performance was achieved partially on the back of the premise of empowering clients. So to quantify how robust Basel remains when clients misbehave, we also evaluated the impact that business clients can have on the throughput of individual correct clients. Clients may harm the system by either stalling or equivocating during the commit phase. The impact of stalls is fairly low since correct clients can usually finish them in a single round trip, and in most cases don't even have to abort their own transactions by requiring redependencies on slow transactions. Dealing with equivocation instead is more involved and costly. And in the red section, we evaluated an artificial scenario in which clients can equivocate at work. However, like I previously mentioned, Basel does not allow clients to choose the decision. So not only is equivocation detectable, but also exceedingly rare to succeed in, making the strategy infeasible to pursue in practice. Overall, we can show that despite more than 30% of total transactions being faulty, 
Basel remains not just live, but has robust performance since failures only affect conflicting transactions. And when they do, they can be recovered swiftly. I want to end by concluding that we show with Basel that using this client driven design, it is possible to build the abstraction of a BFT totally ordered log in a way that is both highly concurrent and yet highly resilient. I know we had very little time to talk about interesting technical bits, so feel free to ask me afterwards in the Q&A or shoot me an email. In our paper, you can find detailed discussions of the protocols that compose Basel and several further micro benchmarks to help understand Basel's performance profile. Thank you.